since we're doing a whirlwind introduction to all of economics, uh, I've been talking to a few objectivists recently and just, you know, uh, Ayn Rand comes up as a, as a person, as a philosopher throughout many conversations. A lot of people really despise her. A lot of people really love her. It's always weird to me when uh, somebody arouses a philosophy or a human being arouses that much emotion in either direction. Uh, does she make, uh, do you understand, first of all, that level of emotion? And what are your thoughts about Ayn Rand and her philosophy of objectivism? Is it useful at all uh, to think about this kind of formulation of uh, rational self-interest, if I could put it in those words, or I guess more negatively, the, the, the selfishness, or she would put, I guess, the virtue of selfishness. Ayn Rand was a big influence on me growing up. The book that really mattered for me was Capitalism, the Unknown Ideal. Hmm. The notion that wealth creates opportunity and good lives and wealth is something we ought to valorize and give very high status. It's one of her key ideas. I think it's completely correct. I think she has the most profound and articulate statement of that idea. That said, as a philosopher, I disagree with her on most things. And I did, even like as a boy when I was reading her. I read Plato before Ayn Rand. And in a Socratic dialogue, there's all these different points of view being thrown around. Yeah. And who, whomever it is you agree with, you understand the wisdom is in the coming together of the different points of view. Yeah. And she doesn't have that. So altruism can be wonderful in my view. Humans are not actually that rational. Self-interest is often poorly defined. To pound the table and say existence exists. I wouldn't say I disagree, but I'm not sure that it's a very meaningful statement. I think the secret to Ayn Rand is that she was Russian. I'd love to have her on my podcast if she was still alive. I'd only ask her about Russia, which she mostly never talked about after writing We the Living. And she is much more Russian than she seems at first, even like purging people from the objectivist circles. It's like how Russians, especially female Russians, so often purge their friends. It's weird, all the parallels. So you, you're saying, so yes, so I... Um assuming she's still not around. Uh, but if she is and she comes into your podcast, so you, can you dig into that a little bit? Do you mean like the per her personal uh, demons around the social and economic uh, Russia of the time the, the, when she escaped? The she traumas was, she suffered there, yeah. what she really likes in the music and literature and why. Music and literature, huh? And getting deeply into that, her view of relations between the sexes and Russia, how it differs from America, why she still carries through the old Russian vision in her fiction, yeah. this extreme sexual dimorphism, but with also very strong women. Yeah. To me, is a uniquely, at least Eastern European uh, vision, mostly Russian, I would say. Yeah. And that's in her. That's her actual real philosophy, not this table-bounding existence yeah. exists. And that's not talked about enough. Yeah. She's a Russian philosopher. Yeah. like she Or yeah. Soviet, whatever you want to call it. And... If she wasn't so certain, she could have been a Dostoevsky, where it's not that that certainty is almost the thing that uh, brings out the adoration of uh, millions, but also the hatred of millions. <laughs> he became a cult figure in yeah. a somewhat Russian like manner. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is It is what it is. Uh, but I love the idea that I, again, you're just dropping bombs that are poetic, that uh, the wisdom is in the coming together of ideas. It's kind of interesting to think that no one human possesses wisdom. No one idea is the wisdom, that the coming together is the wisdom. Like in my view, Boswell's Life of Johnson, 18th mm. century British biography. It's in essence a co-authored work, Boswell and Johnson. It's one of the greatest philosophy books ever, though it is commonly regarded as a biography. John Stuart Mill, who in a sense was co-authoring with Harriet Taylor, a better philosopher than is realized, though he's rated very, very highly. Plato slash Socrates, a lot of the greatest works are in a kind of dialogue form. Goethe's Faust would be another example. It's very much a dialogue. And yes, it's drama, but it's also philosophy. Shakespeare, maybe the wisest thinker of them all.